Good morning, everybody. It's a rowdy crowd in here. Uh, I, I commend you on coming back. Uh, you know, you had the Laity Sunday last week, and they hit it out of the park, and so you may have thought that's as good as it can get, and you, you know, you shouldn't try to mess it up by coming back and seeing anything else. So. Uh, I commend you for coming and, and, and uh, even after that being willing to experience some more stuff. Because you came today, you have a, a wonderful thing to be a part of. Uh, we're going to celebrate Odin's baptism and that is always a joyous event. Um, and so I'm glad that you're here to be a part of this and to commit on behalf of the wider Christian church uh, to be able to offer support to Odin as he grows and as Christ grows with him. Um, in addition, there's lots of other things happening here at the church, and uh, tried to show that in our weekly update. There's a calendar of upcoming events, real simple one at the very beginning, uh, so you can look ahead and see some of the different pieces that are, are, are about to happen. Um, our newsletter is taking shape right now, and uh, it's, it's going to be partially ready to go ahead and hand off uh, tomorrow uh, when Sandy, our new church administrator, uh, comes to work here at the church. Uh, so we're excited to have her come on board here uh, and be working with us. Uh, please uh, give her time uh, to be able to figure things out, learn how we do things. Uh, she does have long experience as a member at Asylum Hill Congregational Church and as an administrator in different capacities. And so we're really enthused about what she brings uh, to the position. And I'm sure folks will hopefully be in contact, drop in, say hello, introduce yourselves. Just don't do it all at one time. Uh, you know, just spread it out a little bit. That would be nice. Uh, and, and again, uh, we'll get things to you as, as quickly as we can as, as we do this handover. Um, I, 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 and in, in the midst of that, I guess I want to pause real quick and just say, uh, in the bridge time here, uh, Terry's been fabulous about coming back and, and helping us out when we have questions, showing us things, uh, generally looking to see if we can, if we, if, if Mary and I are like sobbing, you know, trying to figure out what to do in the office. Uh, Mary's been terrific about like saying, oh, and Brian is helping with these things, which sounds great, but Mary has taken on the, the by far the, the brunt of absorbing those duties in addition to her own, and she's right here. Can we express gratitude for... Going above and beyond. There you go. Artie's like, for me? Yeah, okay, very good. Um, so in addition to that, those are some, some exciting things. There are some other exciting things that are taking place as well. Uh, one, you have a, a little note in here about uh, uh, one anniversary that's being celebrated. Uh, the Newmans are celebrating 57 years of happiness, it says. <laughs> I know Al's sense of humor, so I'm just wondering here, 57 years of happiness, but what anniversary is it? <laughs> just, uh, oh, okay, all right, just, just wanted to clarify there. Okay, very good. Um, sorry, that's one of Tom's jokes usually, so. Uh, um, so that's wonderful news. In addition, there's some other neat things that are happening. Next Sunday, uh, we're gonna have Scout Sunday here in the church, and we hope to have lots of different folks who are involved in scouting in its many forms uh, here to go ahead and appreciate what they do and to give thanks for them. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to join us with that. If you yourself have been a scout and you wanna see if you can fit in your old uniform, we're up for that. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you go, that, that's fantastic. Um, in addition, next Sunday after church, uh, Sunday Stroll is back, and so an opportunity to get together with others, hopefully have better weather than we'll have later on today, uh, and the details are here in your bulletin about meeting at Rails for Trails and uh, whatever mode of transport works for you uh, and joining in with that time. There's some other pieces that are going on beyond that. One of them that's not been placed on the calendar yet is uh, we have an opportunity to bring some folks in to help to educate us and in particular uh, to educate us around uh, CPR and also what to do if someone is bleeding and how to help them in the immediate term um, and uh, down the road uh, we are in the process of acquiring an AED uh, that will be able to be used if anyone's experiencing a heart issue and uh, we'll have an opportunity to also learn how to use that properly. But we want to find out, first of all, uh, with the CPR and the Stop the Bleed, you know, folks who are interested in learning about this, and then when we might be able to be able to get together. 
This will not be um, all day certification, come out of it with those things. It will be just kind of familiarize yourself and help you to learn some things uh, so that uh, you, you feel at least like you're equipped in some way to help if, if someone's in need. Um, so that sign up is outside the fellowship hall. We hope you'll take a look. Again, right now we're just searching for who would like to be a part of it um, so that then we can find the, the appropriate time to get together. So those are events. There are many more, and once the newsletter is completed, you'll see even more. Um, the only other piece that I need to share, and I hope most people here are aware of it by now, uh, but just is that I shared this past week that I am going to go ahead and have a transition in my life, which means one for the church as well. And that is that I'm going to be moving over to another congregation to begin the next part of my ministry experience. Um, and that's a difficult decision, uh, but it's one that I don't, have not done very often, whereas other ministers have done it quite a bit more often than I have. Uh, so it comes a little bit more, you know, uh, something you're not used to seeing. In a congregation that enjoyed Don Ketchum's many years of ministry and then mine, you put us together, basically it's half a century. Um, you know, it's, it's a different kind of experience. Uh, but coming up on a time where my youngest is graduating from high school, uh, and I've kind of got a, a bookmark here in terms of periods of ministry and periods of my life. Uh, it felt like a good time to, to maybe seize hold of that, do a little bit of a change, um, embark on this next part in a place with new memories uh, and experiences. So I'm going to be moving over to Gilead Church in Hebron, Connecticut, way on the other side of the mountain. I know mean, it's like nobody ever goes over there. Um, and actually we'll be continuing to work with really wonderful musicians as uh, I'm going to be rejoining my work with Andre Stolyarov, who's the, the Minister of Music at that congregation, which is just a coincidence, um, by the way. Um, but we have some time still now. June 18th is going to be my final Sunday here at West Avon, uh, so I hope that you'll be joining with me in these things up to that point. And then also, life will continue on. Uh, there's many more plans moving forward from that. And uh, Mary has been, you know, working so long to manipulate this plan where she takes over the church on June 19th. So you have to stick around to see what that looks like. Um, you know, she, she's already taking over multiple jobs. Mine is next. Um, so, uh, again, thank you for the time with you. And we'll have time to go ahead and wrap things up uh, a little bit later on. But I wanted to make folks aware uh, that this was coming up. All right? Anybody want to top that? Anybody have other, other news that's, uh, that, that's appropriate right after that one? Mm. Okay. If not, uh, then what I want us to do is to pause for a moment and appreciate the music ministry of the wonderful folks we have here. Uh, so we're going to let this music help us to enter into a spirit of worship.
folks, if you're comfortable doing so, I invite you to rise and welcome one another to worship. Uh, you can shake hands, bump elbows, wave, say hello, but welcome each other, introduce yourselves. So folks, uh, yes, wave to the choir, wave to the folks at home there if you would. I often forget to do that, I apologize. Um, but yes, include them in this because uh, they are part of our body and are part of our worship, especially our choir right now, offering that beautiful music. Folks, if you'll remain standing, if you're comfortable doing that, grab your bulletins and you're gonna find our call to worship. We're gonna share that. Odin has informed me it's time for the baptism, so uh, we have to kind of you know, move things along here. Odin's ready, okay? He's ready to be part of the Christian church. Okay, so, though the way seems long and the road rough, yet will we trust the one who leads us. Though the direction is unknown and we don't know the outcome, yet will we place our lives in Christ's loving care. It is Christ who brings us out to green pastures and restores our souls. It is Christ who gives us hope and peace. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we're going to turn to hymn number 79 in those blue hymnals, God is My Shepherd, where we'll hear an adaptation of the 23rd Psalm.
much. Please be seated if you would. Okay. All right. Odin, are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, I like the enthusiasm. Absolutely. And Odin is somebody who has always been enthusiastic here at the church, always ready to jump in, has been raised uh, with the feeling that folks here are part of the bigger family. Um, and it feels very safe here and feels uh, at home. And that's what we're going for. So uh, we're excited about that. But today what we want to do is give an official welcome and blessing uh, on behalf of Christians throughout the world and to offer the gift and the sacrament of baptism where we recognize all the blessings that have been a part of Odin's life all along and we ask for many more in the journey ahead. So I'm going to ask that his folks, Allie and Tyler, come up and join me. And we'll see if Odin will come up or if he'll be in orbit until the critical time here. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. Hey. You're good. Yeah. Okay. She's up here to show how it's done, by the way. Uh, you know, it's kind of older sister duties are tough, right? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, we understand from Scripture that they were bringing children to Jesus that Jesus might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them, but when Jesus saw it, Jesus was indignant, and he said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the realm of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the realm of God like a child shall not enter it. And Jesus took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. At another, another time, Jesus said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so we follow that. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. And inasmuch as the promise of the gospel is not only to us, but also to our children, baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of their acceptance into the care of Christ's church, the sign and seal of their participation in God's forgiveness, and the beginning of their growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. So, I have some questions for mom and dad here first. All right. So, do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. Will you encourage this child to renounce the powers of evil and to embrace the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, we will. Will you teach this child that he may be led to profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, please say, we will. We will. And do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please say, we do. We do. And just one more. Okay. And do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with this child in the Christian faith and to help this child to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence by furthering Christ's mission in all the world and by offering the nurture of the Christian Church so that he may affirm his baptism? If so, please say, we do. We do. All right. They've answered their questions. You all have a question to answer as well on behalf of this congregation and also Christians everywhere, this family that Odin's going to be joining in and apparently preaching to in just a moment. So, Jesus Christ calls us to make disciples of all nations and to offer them the gift of grace and baptism. Do you who witness and celebrate this sacrament promise your love, support, and care to Odin as he lives and grows in Christ? We promise our love, support, and care. Wonderful. So now, we're going to go ahead and bless this water that we will use, along with the Holy Spirit, in this time of baptism. Odin, do you want to see me pour some water? Very exciting. You ready? Okay. So we thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters, and out of the waters of the deep you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Noah, you washed the earth with the waters of the flood, and your ark 
of salvation bore a new beginning. In the time of Moses, your people passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan, became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all the nations by the water and the Holy Spirit. So this, then, is the water of baptism. Okay. Do you want to see this? Let's check it out. Yeah? Do you want to touch it? Don't have to. Can I use this water on your head like this? Like I'm putting it on my head? I can do that? Okay. Well, by what name shall this child be called? Odin. So. Wonderful. Odin, you are baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit be upon you, Odin, child of God, disciple of Christ, and member of the church. Amen. You did awesome. You did awesome. Yay! Yeah! Wonderful. Did he do okay? He did? Okay, good. All right. Well, so we'd like to have an opportunity, although you get a chance to see Odin most every Sunday here. Uh, well, let's have a chance just to go ahead and see him up close and to offer congratulations. So he's going to make his way around. He's going to be escorted by mom, by Allie, and, uh, or both, whichever you prefer, whatever you want to do. Uh, but while that's happening, grab those inserts that are in your bulletins, and we're going to sing Child of Blessing, Child of Promise. You can stay seated, uh, but just welcome him and say hello and greet him into the Church of Christ as he comes around here. Just handed them the baptismal certificate, which if you see has lovely handwriting, which means I am not the one who filled it out. Uh, but my signature's on there, so that's good. But what we want to do is just one more time, let's offer our congratulations to Odin, to everybody in his family, okay? Awesome. Tyler and Allie, thank you. Thank you for including us in this. Wonderful. So now, it's a chance for you can make your way down, and anybody who wants to, 
uh, our young folks can have a time to join in Sunday school. Yes? Okay. So it's all throughout the school. <laughs> You're going to head downstairs because I took all of Mary's time that she normally has on Sunday morning. I took it all. So she's going to do all the cool stuff downstairs today. So she will lead you down there with Artie. So while they're gathering up and making their way down for Sunday school, I want to invite us to continue uh, opening our hearts to God. So if you join with me, let's just join in a moment of prayer as we ask for the Holy Spirit's inspiration. God, thank you for letting us be a part of this time this morning, for celebrating each life, but especially celebrating Odin right now, thinking about the joy that he brings, thinking about his own personality, his own special nature that you helped to mold and to shape and that you will continue to do over years and years and years to come. God, as we take part in baptism, it reminds us. It reminds us that we too have been called, that we too have been blessed, that we too are special in your eyes and that we too are meant to be pulled out into this world as your, as your body, your sons and daughters, and that we're meant to go ahead and to find ways to share this wonderful news of your love with others. So allow your spirit to inspire us today, strengthen us, encourage us, maybe help us to be brave so that we can follow and do what you've commanded us. We pray all of this even as we now lift to you the prayer our Savior taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we seek to go ahead and follow in those promises that are either made for us and hopefully we take on for ourselves later or those promises that we have committed ourselves to, trying to find ways to serve Christ, to worship, to open our lives, to be generous. Sometimes we stumble, sometimes we really fall. But we have been encouraged with the knowledge that our God is a loving, healing God and one of those healing things is that God heals relationships. So let's open our hearts now with our prayer of confession so that we can seek healing in our relationship with God, with ourselves, and with each other. Patient and loving God, we stand at the gate and peer through. We keep creating our own ways, believing that we know what is in our own best interest, and we ignore the voice of the one shepherd who will guide us to peace and hope. We wander aimlessly and then wonder why we get so lost. Help us stop and listen to the shepherd's voice. Let us place our trust in the shepherd who has never failed us, who loves and guides our lives. Forgive us our stubbornness and stupidity, for we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. One of the understandings in baptism is that it reminds us that we are washed clean, that we are made new, and that's not something that just has to happen once. And that can happen over and over again when we open up to God and we ask for that help that we need, the healing that we need, and then hopefully we immediately know without any hesitation that God's already beat us to it. So let us rejoice in God who continues to amaze us and show us the depth and the breadth of what love can actually be. Amen. Good morning. Please listen to the word of God as it is recorded in the Bible. Our reading is from John chapter 10 verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, 
and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for this sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. May God bless to us this reading and the hearing of this scripture. Let us praise God for the word. pleased that they shared that. That's one of my uh, favorite Easter season um, songs, a, a reusing of a French carol. Um, I'm always scared to do, the, do it as a hymn, though, because I'm always like, oh, how are we going to be able to pick this up? We're going to be able to sound good. They sounded good, so that, that was wonderful. That was fantastic. Um, 
in my household, we are, we are coming down to a deadline. And since taxes, you know, that since that's passed, it's not that one. Um, but we're coming down to the deadline where poor Gwen has to, 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 to make a decision with everybody watching. She has to decide which college uh, is going to be hers for next year, and tomorrow is the big you know, final day to decide. Uh, it seems like a million years ago that she was filling out all these applications for the schools. Um, but one thing that became really apparent, uh, again, while she was working on it, after doing this now four times, uh, was that you know, there's a big emphasis in these applications for colleges where they want to know all your involvements, but they really encourage you to be able to say all the places where you're a leader. You know, over and over again. That, that's, that's the extra points. That's the bonus points. And uh, when Gwen was working on those, she had lots of interesting things that she was involved with, but, you know, she had a hard time pointing to uh, being the leader of things. Um, and in fact, even late in her application where you can write something about yourself, she wrote about that. She wrote about kind of, you know, where she tried to put herself out there, tried to see, and, um, you know, that hadn't been the choice for others, and that it was something she was going to keep trying to do in her life. And I thought it was an interesting choice, and it was very candid and open and, and powerful. Now, when she was doing that, it reminded me of a story I knew from a long time ago, but one that kind of always resonated in my head. It was one about college applications, and uh, in this case, it was someone uh, who had filled out their application, and there was a space uh, for this particular college back when most people did individual applications, where it said, point blank, are you a leader? That was the, that was the question. Well, this respondent, when she was filling hers out, said, honestly, conscientiously, no. You know, she put no, and she moved on to the next question, you know, and, and, and thought, well, I mean, you know, may have just kind of blown everything up right there, but uh, she sent it in, and later she was really supply, uh, surprised when she got her acceptance letter uh, from that school. And in the letter it said, Dear applicant, a study of the application forms revealed that this year our college will have 1,452 new leaders. We're accepting you because we feel it is imperative that they have at least one follower. <laughs> was the, I don't know, maybe, maybe that was uh, Gwen's technique as well. She thought, well, maybe they need some folks to follow all these incredible leaders that they're, they're bringing in. I bring all of that up because today, uh, not in any official capacity, but just because of the text that fall today, today is often known as Shepherd Sunday. And you can't talk about shepherd very easily without talking about sheep, which aren't a big part of a lot of people's lives today. But what happens more often than not is that folks have preconceptions in their minds about sheep, maybe going back to little books when they were growing up, it depends. Um, but we have certain things, stereotypes that we throw on them. Often we talk about somebody being a sheep. Well, we think about following. We don't think about leading. And sometimes it's a, a way of saying, well, they don't think for themselves. Uh, that's, that's kind of what gets thrown in there. Uh, Barbara Brown Taylor, that wonderful preacher, one time she talked about a conversation she had with a friend who grew up in a sheep farm in the Midwest. And talking to this friend, he was really insistent on breaking the stereotypes. And so he said that, you know, sheep are not, in his words, dumb at all. He said, if cattle ranchers, it's cattle ranchers who kind of spread this, this false wor you know, word about sheep. He says, uh, you know, sheep don't behave like cows. Cows are herded from the rear by hooting cowboys with cracking whips, but that won't work with sheep. You have to, if you stand behind them and you make loud noises, then the very first thing those sheep are going to do is turn around and run and get behind you. Well, they do that because they prefer to be led. It's true. You push cows, but you lead sheep, is what her friend said. But then he went on to say, they're not going to go anywhere that someone else does not go first. Their shepherd, who goes ahead of them, shows them that everything is all right. And that's powerful. Now, it's coupled with, also out of our passage today, Jesus saying that the sheep know their shepherd and know the difference between a shepherd and a stranger. 
Uh, well, this sh sh person who grew up on a sheep farm said, it never ceased to amaze them growing up that they could walk right in through a, a sleeping flock of sheep and not a single one would be bothered by it. But if a stranger came anywhere near them, there would be pandemonium among all of those sheep. That they knew who to trust. Jesus, in the gospel passage from John today, wants to say that in our hearts we know innately who our shepherd is, and there's an encouragement to say, so trust it. If you feel that, if that's what's coming over you, trust it and open yourself up and know that the shepherd will take care of you, will lead, will show you that it's not dangerous. That can be a powerful, powerful thing if we can really make it a part of our life. Friday, just this past week, someone who trusted profoundly in God as their shepherd in life, and in a life that was far from free of difficulty and heartache and pain, passed away. This is Rabbi Harold Kushner. Now, he wrote 14 books over the course of his life, but he's most famous for when bad things happen to good people. So I don't know. I heard some reaction to that. It's certainly been around long enough that I don't need to do a spoiler alert if I tell you anything out of this book. Now, he wrote this book, and you'd know this if you had a chance to see it at some point. He wrote, wrote it after his firstborn child passed away. I'm going to share some things that he said at different times when he was talking about what he learned. One of them would be, in the broadest sense, one of the lessons that he learned he tried to share in that book. He said, God would like people to get what they deserve in life, but he cannot always arrange it. Forced to choose between a good God who is not totally powerful or a powerful God who is not totally good, the author of the book of Job chooses to believe in God's goodness. And right away, we see him wrestling with very difficult things. But this book that was published over four decades ago provided a message that must have resonated because today, still today, people turn to it, which he lamented later in life, saying he felt you know, good in a way that he was helping, but bad that people still today were running into these situations where this was something they needed most at the time. He shared a message that God's love is unlimited and that God's ultimate plan is that people will live fully, bravely, meaningfully, even if it is a less than perfect world that they live in. Now, he was a rabbi in Massachusetts. Some people might not have known that part. Some people didn't know he was a rabbi. He spoke so eloquently, so broadly about the love of God that people might often try to appropriate them into whatever their tradition is and just assume he's a part of it as well. When big events happen, sometimes people turn to him to find how they've made sense out of it. And so in September 11, 2001, after the events of that day and people trying to reel and to make sense of how any of it could happen and wondering, uh, a lot of folks turned to one of the other books that he wrote. He wrote a book about the 23rd Psalm. And he found that this was something that people were accessing more and more as they tried to, to deal with this. We often hear the 23rd Psalm in, in the King James Version. In fact, when I use it, for instance, at funeral services, I always go to the King James Version because I find that that's how so many people internalized it and memorized it. It is right up there with the Lord's Prayer in terms of something that so many people just know by heart. But of course, sometimes when we hear it over and over and over and over again in the same way, you know, we can, we can miss out on details. So our first hymn today took that same psalm and it recast it into different words. And I wonder if that was kind of perking things for you, if you were curious to see another way of saying that same thing. There's someone else who did this years ago, took this same psalm and recast it, as many people have, into different words to hear it in a different way. This was uh, Bobby McFerrin. Now, uh, I'm not trying to push Gwen in any particular direction, but because I went to a large undergraduate university, I got to go to see some pretty amazing folks come and do things there, and one of them was I wandered in one night to go ahead and see Bobby McFerrin do a concert. The only thing I knew about Bobby McFerrin was he had been pretty popular recently because he did Don't Worry, Be Happy, right? Everybody, this is, this is Bobby McFerrin in a nutshell for almost everybody who has not actually listened to more of Bobby McFerrin and realized what an amazing musician he is, his family. 
his parents with their gifts in opera, and to hear him take an audience and to teach them how we've internalized certain understandings of what note goes with what note and kind of make them into a musical instrument um, is just amazing. I did not get what I expected that night, but I got a lot more. Well, back in 2014, he was on the, uh, the program On Being with Krista Tippett. And during that interview, he said one of his favorite books in the Bible is the Psalms. He says, I go through the Psalms every month. I read, I read scripture constantly, but the Psalms is like the book that I go to most of the time because in it is conveyed every human emotion. And what, tells me, and what that tells me is that God gets it. He gets us. He understands us perfectly because he, in his book, has included the emotional roller coaster rides that all of us go through. He gets it all. He understands it all. He can take it. And Krista said, those angry psalms, those cursing psalms, and Bobby said, he can take it. He can take it. She said, right. He said, he can take it. He says, I get you. I understand you. I love you, you know? He goes on to talk about learning from an individual when he was traveling in Italy who would sing the whole Quran over the course of a year and then taking it to himself to want to explore each of the Psalms, to sing through them and, and to have that same relationship with his scripture. And he went and he wrote this beautiful setting for the 23rd Psalm. I've posted it on my Facebook here this morning, one performance of it. When you see the full title anywhere, it's the, 23, it's the Psalm 23 dedicated to my mother. He put this together when he was working with a group that you would rehearse in a church. They got to talking about church, and folks were talking about church being he, 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 he all the time. And he was writing a new song every morning at that time, or working on them, and he went home, and that next morning, he uh, thought of his Episcopal upbringing, and he thought about uh, that, the way they would sing the psalms, and he went and he took that 23rd psalm and he recast it. Uh, and changed it around, played with the imagery like a lot of other people did. And so if you listen to it, these are the words you're going to hear. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. She makes me lie down in green meadows beside the still waters she will lead. She restores my soul. She rights my wrongs. She leads me in a path of good things and fills my heart with songs. Even though I walk through a dark and dreary land, there is nothing that can shake me. She has said she won't forsake me. I'm in her hand. She sets a table before me in the presence of my foes. She anoints my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in her house forever, forever, and ever. Glory be to our mother and daughter and to the holy of holies, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now if you want to hear it done beautifully, just either Google it or go to my Facebook. Either one will work. He's someone who found deep meaning in the Psalms, and particularly in the 23rd Psalm. And as I mentioned before, Rabbi Kushner also found deep meaning in the image of this shepherd and what that meant for our life that we had one. On PBS, not long after 9-11, he talked about people's reaction and him, them coming to him in his own you know, synagogue. He said, everybody was asking me, where was God that Tuesday? How could God have let such a thing happen? And the answer I found myself giving was, God's promise was never that life would be fair. God's promise was, when it's your turn to confront the unfairness of life, no matter how hard it is, you'll be able to handle it because he'll be on your side. He will give you the strength you will need to find your way through. And he said when he was doing that, he was paraphrasing the 23rd Psalm. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He says the psalmist was saying, I will fear no evil because... Evil only happens, it was not saying, evil will, I will, I, the psalmist was not saying, I will fear no evil because evil only happens to people who deserve it. The psalmist instead was saying, this is a scary, out of control world, but it doesn't scare me because I know that God is on my side, not on the side of the hijacker. God is on my side, not on the side of illness or the accident or the terrible thing that happened. And that's enough to give me the confidence. 
He said the 23rd Psalm is the answer to the question, how do you live in a dangerous, unpredictable, frightening world? Now, later on, he went on to say, I want to believe in a loving God. And when you see young people losing their lives, when you see innocent people suffering, when you see young parents stricken with illness, how can you believe in a God of love and compassion unless you are prepared to say, some things happen in the world that God does not want to happen? God is good. Nature is not good. Nature is blind. Nature is amoral. Fire burns and bullets wound and falling rocks injure and disease germs infect everybody whether you deserve it or not. He said, you know, I was inspired to write when bad things happen to good people after the death of his son. His son was born with an incurable illness and lived for 14 years. He asked himself, how did my wife and I get through that? You would think that would shatter the faith of the average person. Where did we find the strength and the ability to raise him, to comfort him when he was sick and scared, and ultimately to lose him? And the only answer is when we used up all of our own strength and love and faith, there really is a God and he replenishes your love and your strength and your faith. The people who have been hurt, and this again is Rabbi Kushner, by life, get stuck in the valley of the shadow and they don't know how to find their way out. And that's the role of God. The role of God is not to explain and to justify, but to comfort, to find people when they are living in darkness, take them by the hand and show them how to find their way into the sunlight again. And he goes on just a little bit more. He says, why do people let themselves get stuck? So sometimes I think they feel guilty that they're still alive and somebody they love has died. Sometimes I suspect they're afraid. They're afraid that if they ever permitted themselves to recover, then they would lose the person and not, not only lose them physically, but they would lose them emotionally as well if they recovered. He said, as a rabbi, I would try to explain to them, no, that's not how it works. When you've loved somebody, they have entered so intimately into the fabric of your soul that neither death nor time can ever take them out. They are always with you. And then he went back to the 23rd Psalm. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He passed away at the age of 88, which was a favorite number of mine when I was a kid. It was on the front of my bicycle. Now, I can't speak about the intervening years, but at age 74, when he was interviewed, he was asked if his, if his relationship with God had evolved over all those years. And his answer was no. He said, my sense is God and I came to an accommodation with each other a couple of decades ago where he's gotten used to the things I'm not capable of, and I've come to terms with things he's not capable of, and we still care very much about each other. Now, these are words of wisdom, then, for life. He says, much of the time, we cannot control what happens to us, but we can always control how we respond to what happens to us. If we cannot choose to be lucky, to be talented, to be loved, we can choose to be grateful, to be content with who we are and what we have, and to act accordingly. If you haven't already got it, we lost an amazing person on Friday. But then we didn't lose him. In one of his sermons, he talked about all the different I don't knows. He was very open about the things he just didn't know. But he said, you know, our body may be perishable, but he felt like the things, our personalities, our memories, these other parts of us, you know, you can put names to it. He says, he says it's like the conservation of matter. He says, I don't think they go away. He says, I don't know if I can recognize me afterwards and, and I can recognize you. And I, I don't know how it's all going to work, but I do, I do believe it will continue on. He said, but he knows that the biggest fear so many people have, they think, is of dying. But he doesn't think that's what it is. He says that he thinks the biggest fear he encounters in people is that they'll die not having made a big enough difference in the world around them, feeling like they didn't ever get to what they thought they would get and and leave a lasting mark. But his teaching was that that's something everybody can do, that you don't have to write a big book that people are reading decades and decades later. But explicitly, he said, basically, go out into the world and two to three times a week, purposefully be overly kind to someone else. Choose some way to go beyond yourself 
and to extend love in a way that takes their life in a different direction and seek no credit for it and don't try to have anybody pay attention or reward you for it. Just go out of your way to do that because you will know the minute you do it in your body that you have done something healthy and good. You will feel the change it makes in you compared to when you do things you know are not good the way it's so toxic and you feel it in yourself. If that is what he felt it took to be able to go to the end of your life and not have to fear it coming to an end, then I'm pretty confident he had nothing to be worried about. His honest opening up about his walk with God through a life where he had to wrestle and search and discover what having a shepherd really means has helped so many countless others, it would be hard to count all those acts of kindness. Amen. Folks, one of the ways that we turn around and try to help others and we do so without recognition or, or seeking any kind of acclaim is through simple acts of generosity. And so whether that is now through offering something in the plate, uh, including also prayers on yellow cards you'd like to have shared aloud, whether it is online or other ways you're giving financially in support of our common ministry, whether it is turning around and volunteering and helping others or just being intentional and spending time in prayer, Know that these are all ways that you can make a difference and leave your mark. So let's do that now. Dearest God, we ask that you'd bless these gifts, that you'd also bless the gifts of each life here, 
for the many different ways that sharing is happening and, and we are opening ourselves up and we're trying to follow the example that Jesus set more every single day. Help us in that effort. Help us to find ways that you are a part of it. Help us to be a blessing to this world and to everyone we meet. And we pray it in your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much. If we could please be seated for just a moment. We're going to have a, a time to think about our prayers as the people of God. And there are quite a few prayers of folks that we're lifting up right now. And what I want to encourage you to do both today in worship, but also take these with you, is to look in there and see our prayer list contained in the bulletins. And uh, especially for folks who aren't on our prayer care line emails, this is a way to kind of see and be mindful of folks who are in continuing situations. And um, these are all folks I would ask that we would keep in our prayers uh, this morning. Uh, but you'll see it's both for the needs that we have, but also the joys that we have. And you'll see, for instance, that we're definitely celebrating Odin and, um, and the beauty of this morning. So, if you would, join your heart with mine, and let's take a moment uh, to, to open our hearts in prayer to God. God, thank you for this time of worship as we begin this week, as we set our minds on what's most important. Thank you for this moment of sacrament and celebration and the inspiration that it brings each person here. Thank you, God, that in so many places, so many lives, where right now folks are seeking healing, where they are searching and trying to find wisdom or knowledge or guidance, or where they are in a time simply of trying to make sense of their lives and of the world after they've had to say goodbye to someone, or at least had to say that it will be a time before they see each other again. God, you are there. You are there in each one of these moments. God, we give you thanks for the love you show us, for the way that you shepherd us, for the, the fact that you never abandon us, even in the most dark or difficult times. So we celebrate our cup runneth over. And we ask, God, that you would hear us whenever we open our hearts to you, because we know you lean in. We know that you know us by name. We know that you care. And we trust you. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, who offers these gifts and so many more. Amen. So part of a little game the deacons and I used to play, like to play is what can I do off script every single week? Um, sometimes the deacons do it, uh, it depends. This time it's me. Uh, I apologize. I should have also shared specifically that we pray for Carol's speedy, speedy recovery. That's a request that we have. So um, please, if you would add that to your prayers as well, I would appreciate that. That doesn't have to happen just in just one moment. But what does have to happen in one moment if we want to do it along with the accompaniment is that we have to turn to the hymnal and sing at the same time. Uh, so I want to ask if you would grab the hymnals and turn to number 558, and we're going to sing Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. And if you're comfortable doing so, please rise.
folks, I'm going to offer a blessing, but afterwards we'll hear some wonderful music to conclude the worship, and we really hope you'll come down the hallway and join us in the fellowship hall, have some refreshments and visit with each other. Um, But at this time, let's ask God's blessing as we conclude our worship. God, thank you. Thank you for your presence here and throughout our lives. Thank you for this blessing of water and the Holy Spirit and within our hearts and minds, the reminder of how you are with each one of us, just as you are with Odin each moment of his life. And as we move forward then, help us to gain confidence. Help us to know we need never fear that we're doing something alone. Help us to trust in your love and your guidance, your wisdom. Help us to follow in your footsteps because you've shown us the way. And above everything else, help us to know deep within ourselves a sense of peace and blessing because you offer them to us abundantly again and again and again. Amen.